Music, Excel, Worksheets, Scales, Intervals, Modes, and more. Constructing the Music Formula part of the worksheet for the Major Scale and the Related Modes. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you would just like to look at from, say, a music theory standpoint, the construction of the formula that creates the major scale and related modes, thinking of the major scale as our point of reference, the key which we're going to compare everything else to, that's what we're going to do this time. If you do have access to this workbook, you're going to have various tabs down below, including an example tab and then the numbered tabs, the numbered tabs representing the part of the worksheet that we're going to be constructing, coinciding to the numbering system of the video where we constructed it. Let's go back to the example tab representing the end product where we expect to get at the end of this process. We would like a worksheet giving us information about music theory, but also being practical that we can use with mainly our guitar playing, which means the most practical component will most likely be the fretboard, which we will be constructing with the top string on top, the low E string, so that when we're looking at our worksheet, it's going from left to right, top to bottom, same as when you're playing from behind the guitar, left to right, top to bottom, and we want to have our formula over here, our worksheet that can help us to then populate or possibly color code our fretboard, giving us information about the scales that we are in, the related modes, the intervals, and then the chord constructions, and then same with the, the related modes down below, which we can use to then pinpoint the areas we want to focus in on in the fretboard, being able to easily manipulate the worksheet. Now, it's also useful to have the tables on the left-hand side, these tables having been used to construct that worksheet, but also containing useful theory items that can be useful from time to time as we go. So we've constructed this bit last time. We're going to continue with this bit over here this time. So what we're looking at here are going to be the formulae that are going to be used to be taking the 12 notes on the major scale and make a seven note uh, scale from it. I'm sorry, the 12 notes in the musical alphabet. There's 12 notes total. We want to take seven of them and that's going to be our major scale. Remembering the major scale is our point of reference. If you compare this to like physics or something, that's like our planet that we're viewing everything else from, or that's our person, ourselves, that is the point at which we measure everything else too, even though everything is basically relative when we start getting into the world of these modes, because it really depends on your perspective. All right, so then we're going to go back to the, the final tab. Let's do a quick recap of what we have done thus far. So we made our alphabet, which is going A to G, but we have those whole steps and half steps that we have to deal with. We then number the notes. With the numbering system here, we think of them as absolute numbers, meaning I would like to code switch from a D being note number six. I'm going to use different numbering systems, which is part of the problem with music theory, none of it being all that complicated, but that issue of perspective, what type of numbering system is applied to where, becomes an issue. So I'm going to have this absolute numbering system for the notes and the numbers, and then we made our modal system. So with the modes, which is what we're going to use in part when we think of our formulas, these formulas outlining and breaking out, giving us more information about what the modes actually mean, also allowing us to compare and contrast the different modes. First, we just want to list the modes, which we did in a prior presentation. There's seven notes in a scale. And if we look at the different combinations that we will go through this time, we will then determine that we can then create seven different modes, which are basically just different perspectives of the same scale, just like in a physics course, right? We're just measuring it from a different place and we come out to a different scale because we're looking at it from a different perspective. It's useful then to create one perspective, which is our point of reference, 
which in Western music is typically the Ionian mode, otherwise known as the major scale. So we often, you'll hear people say oftentimes that we build everything from the major scale, everything's, con and that's true, but just remember that the major scale happens to just be one of the modes. You could build everything from any of the other modes and look at it as your point of reference, tying everything back to it, it's just that that's not as useful in Western music because m the major scale is the most popular mode. So we might as well use that as our key, our point of reference. If I'm trying to figure out the universe on planet Earth, I'm going to use planet Earth as the key to measure everything from this focal point. Similarly, with the modes, we're thinking in Western music, the major scale is so used, it's the main scale, therefore the Ionian, which is the major scale, will be the mode that we're going to choose, even though it's a random choice or it's, it's just a choice, I could have chose any of them, that I'm going to use as the key to refer everything back to. So that means I can also then take that and, and look at whether they're going to be minor modes or major modes, when we say they're minor or major, we're basically just thinking about the third of the mode to see if it's a major third or a minor third, except for the Locrian, which also has a flat fifth. That's the weird one. But in essence, we're just looking at the third to see if it's a major or minor, and that's going to determine the mode. We'll get more into that later. Now, we also looked at the intervals. Now, these intervals are going to be useful because we talked about them in comparison to the scales that we'll look at. Right now, we're going to go back to the terminology of using our measuring tools of whole steps and half steps. So when we think of our measuring tools, we could say, where's this focal point that we're starting to measure from? In this case, it's going to be the scales. When we looked at the scales and used in terms of these measuring tools, we said, I want to compare everything to the first note in the scale. Uh, what we're going to do now is compare everything to, to each note that we're passing through the scale, and we'll usually use half steps and whole steps. So in other words, notice here when we said we're, if something is one step away, half steps being if we compare the notes to a ruler, inches, that's our smallest unit that we're going to be dealing with, so that's our baseline unit. If we go one step away, I could call that a half step, I could call that a minor second. If I go two steps away, I could call that a whole step. I could call that a major second. If I go three steps away, I could call that a three half steps. I could call it a whole step and a half step, right? And, and I could call it a, a minor third. If I go four steps away, I could call that four half steps. I could call that two major steps. I could call it a major, I mean a whole, I'm sorry, two whole steps. I could call it a whole step and two half steps, right? And I could, I could, and then I, and then I could call it like a major third, which is what we'll, we could tip. We could also call it a minor third and a half step or something like that. So you can see that these measuring tools get kind of wonky, but usually when I'm using these abbreviations, I'm trying to label compared to the position, relative position in the scale. So right now we're going to use whole steps and half steps because we're not comparing to the root of the scale, but we're comparing each note to each note. All right, so let's see what that looks like. I'm going to make another skinny column over here on M. I want to make it the same width, so I'm going to select this skinny column, Home tab, Clipboard, hit the Format Painter, and brush that over here on an M. And so even if, if you don't want to do the Excel thing and you want to write this out on a piece of paper, I think that's a useful exercise as well. I'm going to call this Musical formulas formulas per mode that's going to be my header and i'm going to make this black and white so i'm going to select it make it a header format home tab font group i'll make it black and white and then i'm going to put now i'm going to put the the uh labels down and i'll pull that from here i'm going to say this equals and i'm going to pick up these modes now I'm naming the mode Ionian, and I'm using this uppercase Roman numeral, which oftentimes we use that Roman numeral as an indication of the placement in a particular scale. So, so it could change if I'm looking at different modes. 
But for me, if I'm using this Roman numeral system to refer to an absolute uh, mode, I'm going to use the w Roman numeral system one, a capital one, to represent the Ionian, just like I did over here with a numbering system that is showing the absolute note names. So that now I can name the modes with a numbering system, which is just going to be one through seven. And if you want to do it with Roman numerals, you can indicate whether it's going to be a major mode and a minor mode. So that's how I'm using these Roman numerals. My idea here, or the idea being that we want to tie everything back to like the relation to the major scale. All right, so I'm going to copy this down, put my cursor on the fill handle, and then copy that down till we get to Locrian, make this a little bit wider. And then I'm going to repeat it again. So it's going to be repetitive. I'm going to say this equals the, the Ionian again. And I'm just going to repeat it as though it's basically a circle. That will help us with our data input going forward. And I'll copy this down once again to Locrian. So we're going from Locrian down to Locrian. OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing going across, uh, going across this way. So actually, I need to bring, I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to select this whole thing. I want to pull it down. I could do that by selecting it all and grabbing it and pulling it down. Or it might be easier if I undo that to put my cursor here and right click and insert. I want to insert a cell above it. Uh, and I want to shift these down, shift down, and then OK. So that's the same thing. Now it tried to format it like the one above it. Instead, I'll hit the formatting over here and format paint that this way. All right, so then I'm also going to do Ionian this way. So I'm going to say this is going to be Ionian. I could do it like this. and I can use a formula to, to do all these. I can also copy and paste it and try to invert it. So I could try to take this and then copy it. And then I want to paste it special. I'm going to paste it special. And I want to transpose. So I'm going to transpose it down here and then OK. So that, then it goes this way. Now, it didn't work because I, because I have the references in there. So let me try that again. I'll undo, undo. And I'm first going to paste it here, just the, form, just the letters without a formula. So now it's called what we call hard coded. And then I'll do this again. I'll copy this again. And now I should be able to transpose it because it doesn't have formulas. Paste special. And then I'm going to say transpose it. And then OK, boom. And so that's one way that we can do that a little bit more easily. It's not quite as nice because I don't have like formulas over here. And I do over here. But you know that's an easy thing to do. So then I can select, let's select all of these. I'll make that my header format, home tab, font group black, white, and then I'm going to select all of these. And I want to make it as short as I can to fit the name. So I'm going to put my cursor in between one of these cells, double click on it, and it'll take all of them to the length necessary, just barely to fit the title without it cutting anything off. I'm also going to make this side kind of a header format because these are going to be like the header column, home tab, font group, black white so there we have it i'll double click here oh i can't do it there because the title's too long so i'll put it right about there all right so the ionian formula if we were to think about the ionian formula uh it's going to be this now you might say well where am i getting this formula this is a given i'm going to take this as a priori the formula for the major scale is two steps, two steps, one step, two step, two step, two step, uh, uh, one step. And that gets you back here. So we, you might know that as whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So you might label it W, W, H or something, W, 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 H or something like that. You might know it as that. Uh, notice that we're using intervals in essence but I'm not calling the intervals by uh, interval name that we did over here. We're using whole and half steps because I'm not comparing everything to the root as we did over here. I'm comparing everything to the prior step 
within within the process. So it took a whole step to get to the next note, and then it's going to take another whole step to get to the next note, and then a half step, and then a whole step, and a whole step. I'm not. If I was to compare these intervals, I would say the first one is going to be. If I was comparing everything to the top number, the first step would be a major second, two steps away, and then this one and this one would be four steps away if I compared it to the top one, which would be um, a, a major third, which is four steps away, and then this one would be a perfect fourth, uh, which would be five steps away, right? And then this one would be seven steps away, which is a perfect fifth, right? But I'm comparing not to the root, but rather each step along the way to whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, okay? Now you might say, well, where did I get that formula? That's beyond the scope of the presentation here. That's the Western formula that has been used to construct Western music. We're gonna take that formula a priori. Now I'm gonna repeat the formula here and I can repeat it by just saying, this is gonna be equal to the number up top, enter, and then copy that down, boom, boom, boom. So now we have the same formula just repeated. And that of course is gonna allow us to do the to do the next step, which is the modes more easily. So the mode uh, just means that that we're gonna start from the second note. Now notice I could map this same process this way. So I can think of the Aeolian scale going down this way, or I can think of the Aeolian scale going this way. It's just a table. So I can use the same intervals. I can say this is gonna be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And then, and then it starts over again, right? And so I can, and I can copy it this way. This is the same formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or go this way, whole, uh, whole, half, whole, 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 half, right? And then I can copy this going this way, and you can see it's just a table. The table's gonna be uniform going each way so then so so then if i if i start going down this way i could say okay well now i'm in the dorian and the dorian is going to be is going to be pulling i could say starting it's basically starting at this two if i look at it this way so i'm going to say i could look at it this way and say i want to start uh if that's where i'm starting from which is this two, the next one is going to be this two, right? And then I can copy that down. And so you can see it's just a matter of perspective now. Hold on, I did that wrong. Let me undo that, undo that. So now I'm starting at this two. And so, so I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to then this is the next one in the formula. So boom, I could copy that down. There we go. Okay, and, and another way I could build this, see how I, I can use this with a formula up top. Instead of just typing the formula, this is equivalent to that two, right? This is equivalent to that one. This is equivalent to that two. This is equivalent to that two. This is equivalent to that two. And then, and then this is equivalent to that one. Do, 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 this one. So now you can see how there, that's just another starting point. So this starting point is starting at that two. And if I copy that down, then it's just a shift down. So, so when we look at the Dorian, see what's happening here. Again, it's just a matter of perspective. I'm looking at, at the Ionian or major as my key to say, oh, hey, the formula is going whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. But if I started here, it's just a different perspective. If that's where I started looking, I would say, hey, look, the master formula is actually a whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole to get back to here, right? And then if I looked at the Phrygian, then if that was my perspective, I'd say, oh, well, no, the formula goes like this. It goes, it goes half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half. So it's all the same formula. It's just repeating this formula in a circle. 
And so all of those are equivalent. It's just where is your perspective? Where are you measuring from? What's the starting point? That's the only difference in the modes. But that difference has a lot of consequences. It's more complicated. You know, it actually has a lot of consequences. So I could just copy these down then and say, okay, if I'm starting on this one, then I'm just going to count down. Now it's one, two, two, one, duh, duh, duh. And then it's just going to repeat again. And this is going to be that too. If I copy that down, it's just going to repeat again. And you can see this is the same going this way. This is the Lydian. If I looked at the Lydian here, it's whole, 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 half. Here, whole, 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 half. So it's just like a table that you can kind of verify going, you know, both ways, which is going to help us to construct our, our tables and our fretboard. So I can copy this down. The Mixolydian's just going to start at that too. Copy that down. This is going to start at at this one. Copy it down. Then we're on the Locrian and copy that down. And then it's just going to repeat. So we have the same uh, repeating process here. So I'm going to copy that down, which is just repeating this one. I can copy this one down, which is just repeating that one. And then again, I could just, of course, take all of these and copy them all down. So this is a very kind of messy looking table now. I see that, I, you know, it's probably intimidating to look at. But from a theory, from a just conceptually, you can kind of say, OK, I see what's happening here because this is just repeating. If I can just I can just imagine this either in a circle or repeating in different in, in indefinitely. And there are seven there are seven points before it starts repeating indefinitely. That means that that I can start at any one of those seven points and get a different pattern before it repeats again. I could start at this point. I could start at this point, which would be the Dorian. I could start at this point, which would be the Phrygian. This point, the Lydian. This point, the Mixolydian. This point, the Aeolian. This point, the Locrian. And then if I started here, I would be getting the same pattern as I started with because it's just going to repeat, right? And so that's that's all that's happening here. But that becomes quite confusing. That actually gives you a lot of options and that's great. But then we can also kind of do some comparisons, right? I can compare these two and say, well, what's the difference between the Ionian and the Dorian? Well, it's got a half step from, from going to the one to the two. And then the Ionian has a has a half step where, I mean, has a whole step. I'm sorry, it has a whole step. And then the Ionian has a whole step versus the Dorian has a half step. And then from there it goes, Ionian has a half step versus a whole step, right? You can look at the differences between each interval and 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 that's one way that you can measure what are the differences between the different modes right another way that you can measure the differences between the modes is you can look at it this way and say look at my intervals over here which i've labeled the perfect first the major second which represents the distance from the starting point which i can then add up this way i can say well this one the Ionian is two from the starting point to, to get to the second note, same here. If I add these two together to, to get to the next note, it's a distance of four for the major, but for the Dorian, it's a distance of three, right? If I add those together. If I go to the next note, it's a total distance of five, and this one also is a total distance of five. It's a different combination to get there, but that's why we get to the same perfect uh perfect fifth wait distance i'm sorry <laughs> perfect fourth right and so that that's why we can't we can compare from unit to unit or if we add up all of these units that's another way that we can get to this this idea of the total units from the starting point whatever that starting point is so if i start from whatever starting point and i and i go out four units right that's then that's be a distance that would be uh equivalent to four four units a major third which would be a distance that would tie out to all of the major modes which would be the ionian doesn't match for the dorian you can see it's a minor mode it's a minor mode this is a major mode therefore you have that same distance here 
and then this is a major mode you have the same distance aeolian is a minor that is the minor mode so it's not there because it's only three locrian is the funny one but it's kind of similar to the minor right it has three and it has that diminished fifth so that so that's so we'll start to kind of look at that table more uh later uh but let's just format it here i'm going to put some brackets around it down here hopefully i've got that correct it gets a little bit wonky to look at uh let's go down here and i'm going to put some i'm going to put some table numbers around it like this now hold on a second I can't build it just like that because I've got some zeros down here. So if I copy this one is always the next number. And then I'm going to go down to after this one. And let's do it this way. So this one's always going to be the repeat. So instead of it, I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy this across. So I'll copy this whole bit down here across this way instead of doing it so that should work so hopefully that's correct <laughs> so that so that hopefully i didn't confuse anybody too much so it's, i'm going to go down it repeats down here so we got da, 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 goes down to locrian and then it repeats ionian and because i want the table to not end up with those zeros the way I, the way i copied it before because i run out of columns i'm going to say this repeats right here and then this repeats. So all of these down here are just going to show the repetitive from here down. And I want the same thing to happen here. This one should be repeating the one above it because that's when the whole thing starts repeating. So I could just take those and put my cursor on the fill handle, copy it across. And that's how I got these formulas on the bottom half of the table, which should just mirror, you know, the top half of the table. Okay. I think that's it. All right, so that's the general idea on the mode. So that hopefully makes the modes possibly less intimidating, even though we have this massive table and hopefully gives us a little bit idea of this idea of distances, which we can measure from the starting point, which we usually use these concepts of distances versus distances from note to note, which we could still use these, this kind of, terminology but usually we just go back to whole steps and half steps and you can basically think of this kind of concept as using half steps right uh, from point to point because that's our smallest unit of measure but if you want to call it like a whole step or something like that we usually don't measure the you know that's going to be the idea all right i'm going to also make this top bit black up top so our table has the header there and then let's do a spell check on it maybe does it spell check? So I don't want to change that. Ignore that. And then uh, abbreviation, ignore that. Okay, I think we're good there. And then so once we have that, if I go back to the example tab, now we're going to take that and build these tables down below. Relative major positions per mode, comparing all of the relative positions, which will give me this table, which is another table to kind of compare all of the modes and so i think that's a useful table to use conceptually and we might use that as well to construct these items over here our worksheets and then and then we'll take a look at that information to look at the intervals from the first point constructing our intervals per mode and then we'll look at our intervals this way not looking at the differences or distances per after each unit but rather as compared to the beginning and, and that is a very useful worksheet because now we can analyze by interval what, are, what makes up a major mode, these green ones, and the minor modes, these blue ones. And then we can kind of compare the interval differences between, like, say, the, the major or Ionian and its related major modes. What are the differences between these modes? Because it's not going to be the major third. Uh, which be, and then this because that is the differentiating factor between major and minor and then we can compare the those core minor mode the aeolian minor scale versus the other modes that are also minor meaning they have a minor third as opposed to a major third what's the difference if they both all three of those modes have a minor third right what so that we can look at the intervals which are different and then the locrian is kind of on its own kind of tied to the minors because it has a minor third 
but also has that strange flat fifth. And so that's kind of like the outlier that, that uh, often gets left to the side, but it's quite useful because it gives you that tensiony sound a lot of times. So you probably don't play in Locrian like a whole song, but you, you might, you, those intervals are, are, are interesting because they make tension. So in any case, we'll look at that later.